Hey guys, it's Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. Today is the week 15 garden tour. Hope y'all enjoy. So like always, we'll start at the carrot bed. You can see I've got some new baby sprouts coming up. These are some heat loving carrot varieties. Um, we'll see how serious they were about that. Um, and look at this, I just saw this this morning. Isn't that so cool? Uh, this is actually a really good sign that I've got a healthy fungal population in the soil, so mushrooms make me very happy. Now in the back corner, we couldn't see this most of the time because of all the carrots that were here, but I've got that purple basil sitting back there in the corner. It's not looking as happy as its friend over in the bed. I think it's because the clay is a little deeper there. But if we come on over and kind of look at the rest of the bed, I gotta back up to show you how tall the tomatoes are now. Oh my gosh, look at that. They keep going. They're reaching the top of those poles now. Those are um, eight foot poles that are stuck about six inches to a foot in the ground. Um, so very tall tomatoes. And I've got my tomato buddies here. This is my lettuce leaf basil and my sweet basil. These have recently been harvested, so you can see kind of the splits starting to happen from where I cut it. And I have so many baby tomatoes now. Look at that. Baby tomato, baby tomato, baby tomato. They are everywhere. Also, look at this one. He's got a little finger sticking out. <laughs> Interesting. So, um, I wanted to mention something that I do that I think is helping the blossoms set. Um, so first of all, you need to know that tomato blossoms are self-pollinating. They don't need another flower or the flower of another plant to be pollinated. They just need the pollen inside themselves to get uh, shook to the right place. And so what you can do, some people use like electric toothbrushes to kind of, you know, uh, jostle the insides of the flowers. I've seen people just kind of shake the branches. For me, since mine are attached to these poles, um, what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll just tap on that pole um, and it kind of just shakes the whole plant at once, which is really convenient. I just come down here, tap all my tomato poles. Um, it seems to be working. I've got a lot of fruit setting, as you can see. Now, Here's my other purple basil. He's so healthy. I just cut him back too to make um, pesto. So it's still a really, really healthy plant there. Oh, and I almost forgot. Back over here, this is my first sweet pepper of the season. You can see him sticking up. This is a Zulu pepper. He's a bell pepper that's eventually gonna turn purple. I'm not sure if he's supposed to grow straight up this whole time because um, it's the first one I've seen, but maybe, maybe that's how they grow. We'll find out. Um, and next to him is my very sad looking orange hat tomato. For some reason, the orange hats in this bed, you can see the other one right back there behind that pole. They've been looking so sad compared to the ones that I kept in the yard in pots. Um, and I'm not quite sure why. You can see he's got spots all over his leaves. And I don't want to pull too many of his leaves off because he's a determinant and he's not really going to grow anymore. Um, so maybe this fruit will ripen and that'll be okay. And that'll be all I get from him. I also wanted to show you guys an update on this giant fused tomato. They call it faciated. You can see on the bottom of this, it looks like several tomatoes fused together and that's exactly what happened. Um, now a lot of times, even though you can get giant tomatoes this way, um, people will, if they start seeing this, they'll pull it off before the plant really puts energy into it because a lot of times in these cracks you can get um, bacteria or funguses and it'll like rot inside the tomato. And of course you don't want to have this giant tomato that your plant has put all its energy into just to have it be inedible and ruined. So far this one looks like it's sealed up nice, it's going to be okay, so I'm going to leave it. Um, and hopefully I'll have a really cool, very big tomato out of it. Now I'm going to stand up. We're going to look at the rest of the bed from here. You can see now that I got the radish jungle out over here, I was finally able to mulch. Um, and I think that'll be really good for the plants in this area. 
aside from not being shaded out all the time, they've got proper moisture retention. And you can see like this tomato, he's still a little baby, hasn't even tried to start flowering yet. Whereas this one's over here are just producing like crazy. Um, and that's the difference that a little bit of shade can make for your plants. So if your plants are growing slowly, be sure to take that into account. Uh, I've got some Buena Mulata peppers coming in. Now these are over here because originally I was led to believe that they were sweet, probably because I didn't read the package close enough. Um, so that's why they're over here. It's not a problem, um, but the Zulu is, is the first real sweet pepper that I'm having come up over here. And I said it last week, but I want to say it again. Let me take you over here to this Du de España pepper. So if you look, I topped this pepper like I would normally top my peppers. You can see the cut here. And for the longest time, it just didn't grow and didn't grow. Um, and then you can see eventually it put up this side shoot coming from the bottom. Um, and I've seen this with another plant of the same variety. They seem to really only want to grow single stemmed. Here's that name for you. Du de Spagna. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But yeah, these peppers, this is the only variety of pepper I've run into that I would definitely recommend you not try to top. Also so far, I don't have any ripe big tomatoes. This is the biggest tomato that I have um, when it started growing the soonest, so I think he's going to ripen first. But, I mean, he's just been sitting here green for like two weeks now. Um, and you can see right here, since we got some rain recently, it's starting to get a little split. Um, hopefully that doesn't get too bad, but I am impatiently awaiting this tomato to finally start ripening. Next to him is my single seed challenge tomato. Is a purple Russian tomato and he's looking pretty nice. He's got some more fruits set now. You can see this first fruit he set here has that really interesting like dimples in the top. I'm not sure if they're all gonna be like this. These ones up here are kind of too young to tell for sure but they are coming along really nicely. I'm very excited to one day show you guys the final fruit from my single seed challenge and I think I'm even gonna go as far as saving the seeds from my single seed challenge because that's kind of like watching one one little seed grow up and then have babies <laughs> so yeah single seed challenge doing great um, and as you'll notice I have two turnips going to seed over here those are those bright yellow flowers they're starting to make little seed pods um, and these are like a fair bit longer and skinnier than the ones that my radishes made. Beautiful yellow flowers though. Um, and so I, I did pick one off and try to eat it because radish pods are edible if you didn't know. But these were not very delicious, I will tell you. They are not very juicy. They're so, so stringy and tough because they're so thin. Maybe they just need to get a lot bigger before they're edible. Um, I mean, it definitely it's not going to hurt you to eat them, but it's not a pleasurable experience at this point, I'll tell you. <laughs> so I found something recently, um, just kind of back here in the wild near my gardens, um, that I found to be very exciting. I found... Oh, can you see it on camera? There we go. I found some wild blackberries. Oh, they are pokey. Um, I, so this year I had been really disappointed that I wasn't going to be able to plant berry bushes because I was kind of thinking that I was going to be moving soon. I mean, this is an apartment after all. Um, and so I wasn't able to plant anything more long-term like that. But then I found these wild blackberry bushes and I felt like that was kind of the universe giving me what I wanted. You know, telling me it's gonna be okay. You can still have a few little berries. <laughs> All right, in front of me is the trellis. Let me back up and show y'all. So here's the bean trellis. It is coming along nicely, but slowly. It doesn't look the best. I think the cave beans are the ones that look a little sick. 
and I'm not really sure why. My best guess is that they're in containers and not in the ground. Um, and maybe if I had taken more time to amend the soil here, I could have put them straight in the ground. But lesson learned. I'm still going to get a few beans off of them. You can see here. I'm leaving them on to mature so that I can harvest the beans inside for dried beans because I found that pretty much no matter the age of these pods, they're kind of tough and not really the best to eat. However, Malabar spinach finally starting to vine up, so I moved it over to the trellis. Look at that gorgeous purple color. I am so excited for this to get big and cover the trellis because apparently my beans are having a tough time of it. Oh, look, I just saw this. Look at that flower. Oh my gosh, so this is the flower of a noodle bean. Isn't that just like the most gorgeous bean flower you've ever seen? <laughs> They're so big too. Now I have a baby noodle bean, actually two I think, right over here. This is a Chinese red noodle bean. Already it's getting that red color um, and starting to elongate. So this one and this little baby one here are about five or six days apart in growth. So it's not absolutely taking off, but it is growing quite fast. Oh, and we have a friend. Hello, friend. If you haven't heard me say it before, um, I used to be very afraid of spiders, but um, when they're out in the garden, I trust them. I trust them to stay where they are and not bother me and uh, protect my plants like little bodyguards. Right, and so here is the what used to be the garlic bed is now the squash and sage bed. Man, look at that sage. I just cut some more off of that too. It is just exploding. This is like the number one herb I recommend to grow in South Carolina. It has been green, pest free, disease free, its whole entire life for me. Um, it lives through the winter just fine. I barely have to water it. It's just gorgeous all the time, no effort. Um, so, also, in the front of this bed, I have two spaghetti squash here. I actually did have to plant them from seed. I had tried starting them early and transplanting them, and they just totally died. It was, I learned <laughs> later that uh, squash don't necessarily take well to transplanting, and you can see that in this pumpkin back here. He is kind of just barely hanging on. Today he looks better than he ever has. Um, and there was another pumpkin here that uh, died back as well. Although with the size that these plants get, it's probably for the best that there's only gonna be one in each corner over here. Um, and they're probably gonna spill way out of the bed as they grow. These are gonna be huge plants. Well, fingers crossed, they're gonna be huge plants. So, yeah, baby squashes. There's still plenty of time for them. I know a lot of people already are harvesting full-size squashes by now, but we have a pretty long growing season here and I think it will be not a problem to get a few good winter squash out of these plants before it gets too cold for them. All right, so here we are in the backyard garden. Coming up right away, we have our little tomatoes in pots. You can see they're quite a bit smaller than their counterparts out in the raised bed. Um, these ones in particular are the ones that came back from the dead. Um, I can insert a picture of what they originally looked like. They were just so, so scraggly. I thought, like, for sure this plant is dead, but also it's still green and it's not turning brown, so like, we'll see what happens. Um, and then eventually they started growing new leaves, and now they're not the healthiest tomato plants in the world, but yeah, look at this, they're putting on flowers. I think this one over here, is he putting on fruit yet? I don't see any, but they might, you know, and that's, that's going to be another few tomatoes that I'll have that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And this guy, this is the only Amish paste tomato I had that never looked sick. And I think just because he's in a pot, he's not growing as fast. Um, yeah, he's still looking pretty good though. I'm getting kind of tall. 
Uh, probably I'm going to top him once he gets to the top of that cage rather than letting him spill over like the other ones. Now in between them, there's the ginger continuing to grow. It'll still be quite a while before I'm harvesting from that though. If we go around the tomato, they have their buddies, their little basils. And over here is the stevia sitting next to my catnip, which ooh, just noticed is starting to flower. Look at that. I don't think it flowered last year actually, so that's pretty neat. My cat loves this stuff. He's usually really good about not bothering stuff in the garden, but I got this for him. Um, and he likes to rub on it, but he still hasn't managed to eat it. So I think that's really just indicative of how gentle of a cat he is in the garden. Now if I look up here, you'll see my tomatillos. This one is probably almost ripe. I've heard that you kind of need to wait until it's just about ready to fall off the vine. Um, but it's looking real close. And you can see there are a few other fruits that are set. If you come up here, you can see there's one over here, right there. There's one at the end of that branch down there. And this one is just really stretching its arms out. <laughs> I might end up having to support this one eventually because it's just coming out so far here. Now the orange hats in here. Look at that. Look at that color. So I promised you guys that as soon as a tomato came ripe, I would eat it for you on camera. Um, and I think this one is just about ready. It's feeling nice and soft. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, he falls right off. That's a good sign. Alrighty, here we go. Mm. Tastes tomatoey. It's not as sweet as I would have expected, but I bet that's because it rained yesterday. The secret to getting a tomato sweet, so I've been told, is to um, stress them out a little bit. That way they tend to concentrate their sugars right into that fruit, right where you want it. So I bet that's going to be absolutely delicious after the few dry days that we're about to have. I realized I hadn't shown you guys these yet. Um, these are two pepper plants that I kind of had left over sitting around in the greenhouse. Um, and once I harvested my potatoes, I just repurposed their bags. Um, and I went ahead and topped them. And you can see they're already putting on a lot of that new bushy growth. However, I did not label them. So <laughs> all I know is that these are hot peppers. Um, and we will find out what kind together. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's look at the rest of the hot peppers that we got back here. As always, the jigsaw pepper is just looking gorgeous. Look at that variegation. Oh my goodness. I can't wait. <laughs> um, a lot of these peppers are starting to put on fruit. I've got baby jalapenos right there. I've got some baby cayennes that are, I guess, not so baby anymore. Look at that. Um, let me take you back to the Sugar Rush peaches. Stepping carefully. Here we go. So these are interesting. They're kind of growing more um, upwards at the beginning, which is really cute. So those are the Sugar Rush peach. and. I've got an Anaheim over here. He's starting to get real long. Look at that gorgeous pepper. These are supposed to be like good roasting peppers. Um, I've never eaten them before, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then a lot of my other plants are looking really healthy. I'm not putting on fruit yet though, but we'll get there. The time is coming soon when I will be overwhelmed with tomatoes and peppers. Just gotta be patient. Alright, so back there beyond the peppers are my beans, my bush beans. And as you can see, they're looking rather sad. Um, I really don't know why. 
I don't. Um, again, my best guess is that they're feeling a little crowded in the containers, maybe. Um, I've been giving them nitrogen, so it's not nitrogen deficiency. They just, I got one good flush of beans off of these, and then they started doing this. Now, with this one, this one I actually haven't picked any beans from. These are black beans, and I was planning on just letting those dry on the plant. Um, so this one starting to look sick is like expected because I would expect it to realize that it's reached the end of its growth cycle and is going to start maturing its seeds. With the other ones that I've been picking from, generally what's supposed to happen with beans is that you pick them and then the plant realizes, oh no, I have not completed my cycle, I have not reproduced, and it grows some more and then tries again. These dragon tongues, they're looking a little bit healthier. Still not the best. I wish I knew what I could do better for these other than putting them straight in the ground. You know what's looking incredibly healthy though is this pumpkin. Um, I've seen a lot of my fellow gardeners starting to deal with diseases, specifically powdery mildew. Um, and with all the rain and the high humidity we've had, I am just blown away that this looks as healthy as it does like no spots anywhere. Um, it's also slowly taking over by my AC unit. There's the end of it right there. And it's putting off more and more shoots every day. I haven't seen any flowers coming on yet on this or the cucumbers that are climbing the trellis back here behind it. But I'm hoping that that'll start soon. I mean, these plants are looking so healthy, so beautiful. They've got amazing compost beneath them. I think I'm gonna get some really good stuff out of here. Alrighty, well that was garden tour week 15. Wow, I can't believe that we've been doing this for so long. Thank you guys for watching. So many of you are so kind to me in the comments and I just I can't thank you enough for creating this wonderful community. And I know a lot of you recently joined me um, a lot of you came over from Little Bean's channel, and thank you guys. You guys have been amazing to me as well. She's got a really great community over there, I can tell. Um, I'm sorry we didn't get to harvest anything in the garden today. That's kind of just the way things go sometimes. Sometimes it's overwhelming harvest, and sometimes you're just waiting patiently for that one tomato to finally ripen. But I feel like any day now, any day now, it's going to be ready. And uh, when it is, you'll see it on my Instagram. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Um, I know a lot of you have recently subscribed, but it really does make a difference. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, it lets YouTube know that you like me and I'm worth showing to other people. Um, so thank you again, and I will see you next time. But until then, happy gardening.